Madume, Madume out there. Hello, welcome to you. Welcome to another episode of Diary of a Young Black Christian Woman with myself, your host, Petunia Maota. I am the Young Black Christian Woman and this is my diary. All right. God is good all the time, don't forget it. It's really not defined by the blessings they don't get it. I'm really not concerned about the numbers, I don't stress it. I'm really just concerned about the message. So thank you so much for tuning in, man. Thank you all for the love. Thank you for the subscriptions. Look, I see you. Subscriptions. It sounded wrong. Anyways, I see you. I see you. I really do. Um, so <laughs> thank you so much for the support, guys. And of course, make sure if you have not subscribed, you do so right now. Don't waste any more time. And make sure you share this video, man. Let's get people on this Jesus wave. Uh, so of course, um, last week I was sharing about, you know, sex before marriage, which is a topic that I think like is very close to my heart. And like I said, because it's my life's testimony. But, you know, I thought, you know, topics of sex really really make you get to know someone's character and i thought okay you all are probably thinking hmm hmm so i thought you know let me just give you guys an introduction to me myself you know an introduction to me an introduction to myself you know um allow me to reintroduce myself my name is yes so my name first name is Bitoko, second name is petunia and my a surname is Maota, so Vitoko means patience, and I usually go by Petunia because a lot of people just butcher my Tswana name. It is Vitoko. Say it with me now, Vitoko. That's right, and that just means patience, you know. Um, and yeah, Petunia is a flower. I haven't really seen it with my own two eyes, but I've seen pictures of it, and it's beautiful. It's a beautiful um, uh, purple flower, and that's why I... You know, because of peer pressure, you know, and people ask you, what's your favorite color and all of that. I was like, purple, you know, um, but I don't have a favorite color. I just, mm, y'all, yeah, every color is beautiful, man, you know, it depends on the day. So anyways, my surname is my order. And funny thing is my best friend's brother, well, she used to be my best friend when we were growing up, you know, her brother would always make fun of my surname and say, my order, oh, Odile. And it's funny because I got order. I'm very far from ordering, you know. Um, so, yeah, anyways, and I'm 21 years old. I'm a Christian, of course. Um, and uh, right now, I am doing my final year in a media practices diploma at Boston Media House. And, um... It's just a general, basically, diploma um, in the media field. You know, first year we did everything, almost everything in media, marketing, advertising, journalism, radio, and all of that. And I decided to measure in public relations. So I'll be graduating next year. Hey! So yeah, if you are in need of any PR kind of things, you know, social media marketing, you know, brand management, you know, I got you. <laughs> so um, yeah, and 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 I'm definitely loving it. Uh, I think the best way to describe myself is that I'm extroverted, super extroverted. I've been my entire life. I am the middle child of three girls to my amazing parents, um, and yeah, they are both Tswana, um, and we all still live in the same house. But I'm hoping that this time next year I'll be out of here in my own apartment. So pray with me. That's a prayer request right there. Bazalani, pray with me, okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, I think that's about it, you know. Um, yeah, let's get into it. Let's get into it. So I'm gonna be ask, answering a couple of questions. Uh, look, I've already said I'm a woman of many words. I hope that I can do these 30 questions, you know, in a in a time that makes sense, you know. I don't wanna do like I don't wanna go over, but I'll really try and just you know summarize <laughs> my answers. Okay, cool. So first question, when did you get born again and describe that experience? I got born again in 2014 when me and my dad um, visited a charismatic Pentecostal church for the first time. I was raised um, in a traditional church, the Lutheran church. I even got confirmed in everything. And so we decided to join um, the Pentecostal church. And um, first service, I stood up and I gave my life to Christ. He did too. Um, but I had to go for reassurance in 2015. Um, and uh, that was in April where I went for reassurance basically to rededicate my life to Christ and it was you know because I was just going through so much in 2015 man 2015 was the year um, that I made my final attempt at suicide I've had three attempts at suicide um, one very earlier on in my life in my primary school yeah in my primary school life I've attempted suicide twice and then in my 
in 2015 which was my grade 10 year um i attempted suicide for the last time and it was just because of you know just you know when everything just weighs you down at the same time you know and i was just like i was done with it you know but jesus was like no my girl mm -mm, i have better plans for you and it was difficult for me to accept it in that moment because all i wanted to do was i wanted to be done with it i wanted to be I didn't want to live anymore but you know God came to me and I'm telling you that that moment changed my life forever you know and yeah so I gave my life to Christ again that year in April and I have not looked back I have not looked back I have not looked to the left I have not looked oh I have not looked to the right <laughs> I have not looked to the right I have not looked to the left um forward we go man and I'm so proud of that decision that I have made uh so yeah that's the whole experience around it so uh what has been one of the best things to happen to you from that day onwards um i think the greatest thing is just joy you know i was telling i was telling god that day like i had a conversation with him we sat down you understand i'm like dude if you're not gonna kill me then you're at least gonna make me enjoy life not by the material things but from inwards you know from the inside i want to have joy eternal i want to have you know, and that's when I learned about the difference between happiness and joy. You know, happiness is conditional, but joy is joy is unconditional. It's eternal. It is it is in you, you know. And so I was like, I'm I wanna have joy. And that's why, you know, as the person I am, I always I'm always joking around, playing around, you know, and, and it's because look, I've been through dark days, you know, and I'm like, I'm never going back there. I'm never ever going back there. Uh, so I think that was the best things to have happened to me um, and also my self-esteem has grown so much you know when it's not about you anymore and it's about God then you lose all focus on what people think and what people say and it's just all about God doing what God wants you to do being who God wants you to be okay third question describe life pre-salvation ha yo primary school I was like crazy I was wild man look um I'm saying wild in the in the in the sense that you know I was just really just rebellious. I was naughty at school, never never disrespectful. No 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 no. I was just like talkative a lot, and I got in a lot of trouble because of that. My parents got called like, oh my goodness, teachers hated me. <laughs> People that went to primary school with me know teachers hated me. You know. But yeah, it is what it is, you know. Um, and yeah, that's how I was. Um, Pre-salvation, um, I started uh, tasting alcohol. I, st I tasted alcohol rather in grade eight. Um, uh, it was what was the thing? Guarana. Where Garisa? You know, Garisa wasn't fashion. Guarana was nice though. <laughs> Sweet stuff. So um, yeah, I, I I started with Guarisa. Then grade nine, we went on to like brandy, whiskey. Then it was like vodka you know and just ah, you know and then so yeah by grade nine i had already you know started drinking alcohol and grade 10 onwards <laughs> it just got worse so um that was me pre-salvation low self-esteem um yeah i didn't really get bullied uh i never bullied anyone also but i did have a bit of a temper so you know if you tried me i gave it to you i handed it to you on a platter um i liked drama then gossiping you know that was just me you know i mean where have you met someone who is as loud as me who doesn't gossip and he's not saved i mean who doesn't like if they don't gossip because they're not saved where have you met someone like that no way <laughs> so i was i was that girl man you know just crazy like that i was scared of boys yo i must tell you this look i was scared of boys look it was because at this certain point of my life you know i had <laughs> and i'm gonna talk about this on my other episode i had already been exposed to you know under the sheets kind of business you know obviously via tv and so oh i put it so subtly i hope you get what i'm saying but so i was just like oh this thing looks it's so you know so i'm gonna stay away from guys especially because we were taught that look guys want one thing one thing only you know and that is to get you into the bed you know to take you back to their crib get you to take you back to their crib get you inside of the bed and uh yeah you know that song i'm not gonna continue so um yeah um i i, I stayed away from boys in that kind of sense um and also because i was going through my own things look funny thing man, about that stage in my life is like 
I, I felt so insecure about my body like I was told so much that I, I'm fat ing, ing. but Nicki Minaj came out I think grade 6 when I was in grade 6 or when I was in grade 7 when Nicki baby came out it's like okay you think hey girl Pakistan Nicki Minaj but like just like literally a few months ago I was fat so I did have self-esteem issues in that sense and you know you're going through puberty you know your chest is getting larger your behind is getting larger your hips are getting wider you know it is a lot you know and people are so insensitive especially the boys they were so insensitive but yeah anyways Nikki baby kind of helped me through that stage because then now I was considered thick so anyways and then yeah grade 8 grade 9 i was in a girl school so i was exposed to like lesbian like i was exposed to lesbianism if that's a thing and you know bisexual people so just a different perspective on relationships and how people out there are doing it and you know it was it was pretty interesting so life post salvation is me right now so um grade 10 grade 11 grade 12 and my first year out of high school i was still drinking still partying you know but um in 2017 i then like um i joined this amazing church and it just like it made me just stop all of that like i didn't have time anymore to party you know and because i don't have time to party means i'm not gonna drink i wasn't a person who would drink without partying for me that doesn't make sense if i'm not gonna drink to get drunk i'm gonna drink juice all right i'm gonna drink water all right so <laughs> because i didn't have time to party anymore i didn't have time to drink and i decided to stop drinking entirely so since that day i have not looked back um it's been three years now uh so yeah post salvation yeah and then you know it's me right now you know what i'm saying cool so what are you doing with your life at present i did say i'm doing my final year in public relations and uh yeah i'm part of campus radio you know i'm doing a lot of stuff on the side also you know um so yeah that is that is that is that is me in a nutshell right now um so what kind of a friend are you i think i'm a very confrontational friend if i don't like what you're doing i'm gonna tell you and people who have really known me for long kind of they've kind of made peace with that they kind of accept that and they know that i'm gonna tell you you know um but i'm also a very you can confide in me you know um like i said yes i am confrontational but i'm not judgmental so people always confide in me and also i give the best advice so <laughs> i've always been that girl and like you know even before i got into a relationship i was giving great relationship advice i mean tell me that's not grace tell me that's not an annoying thing <laughs> so yeah um and um wait what's the question oh what kind of friend are you i'm also just like um like i said i think confrontational is one of those not confrontational in the sense that like i'll tell you if something is wrong i do not hold back on that um if you are my friend i believe you know we have our friendship was built on the truth of who i am and the truth of who you are and so we are meant to make each other better and so that is my kind of relationship with my friends i'm also the loudest one always the loudest one in the room and in the group always that has been my life like since way back when you know so i'm also the loudest one the one with the loudest laugh also um yeah i'm just i'm i'm fun like that i really think i'm the fun friend um but when things are serious things are serious you understand then my serious face is on but when we're having fun <laughs> we are having fun so yeah i think i'm that kind of person who whenever you have like a party or something you want to invite me I'm just gonna make that vibe. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm the I am no, I am the vibe. <laughs> okay, so um when did you decide to decide what okay, we still have some time. When did you decide to save yourself for marriage? Crazy story. I was like what eight, nine, you know, and like I said, I was raised in like the Lutheran church and the Tswana Lutheran church. So I'm sitting there in church and I didn't know Tswana. Dude, I grew up speaking Afrikaans and then grade r my parents took me to an english school then i learned english so english and afrikaans were my like main languages you know so i'm there and it was difficult because like you're there for like two hours sometimes three hours and it gets one wire wire you know and so what i'll do is like read through my bible just to pass time you know so i came across the scripture like i was sharing last time of the enochs and people who were saving themselves for marriage and pulsing what and what and for me that was interesting and funny enough 
right after that you know i was watching this popular soapy eve you know 90s kids y'all know eve y'all know eve the 2000s don't know they don't know anyways so we're watching eve and eve was saying how she she celebrates you know and i was like mm, okay and, and and like i said you know i saw how marcus her boyfriend at that time was just so uncomfortable with it and i'm like mm, what's this thing that is making men uncomfortable you know i want to be that girl not just to frustrate a man but so that a man knows i'm not like all these other girls that he meets all these other broads you know that is not who i am and i've also always liked being different going the different route you know and so it was interesting to me i learned more about it i learned about celibacy i learned about abstaining you know i learned about sex before marriage and just i i've just like my whole life i've exposed myself to just learning more about it and you know from that moment i didn't know much but i was like this is interesting and i think this is the route i want to take and so after salvation it became even more clearer for me why i should take it so that time obviously like i said i was scared of boys so that is what kept me until i got saved and then once i got saved all of it was put into perspective and i really received god's wisdom around it and yeah then it became easier for me from then so yeah um so, so yeah then obviously as i grew up i was like hmm now i see more of a reason to save myself for marriage so that is basically what has happened how many relationships have you been in thus far? I've been in four relationships. Um, yeah, <laughs> I won't disclose what my longest relationship was because you're going to think that this referee is, you know, like they say actually that, you know, like some people are referees and some people are players. Like I'm a referee from the side. I, I, I give the players in-depth knowledge about it all, but it doesn't really work for me because I'm not on the field. <laughs> but it's because I have my standards and I think my standards oftentimes intimidate a lot of the guys I meet and a lot of the guys who want to be with me. So um, I know definitely the older I'm getting, the, I'm getting exposed to more and more guys who are in my category. And I won't even say type, I, I don't have a type, but people that have the things that I want, I'm meeting them as I grow up. So yeah i think that's why you know also my relationships haven't lasted that long because eventually we meet a speed bump you know we meet a moral speed bump where we have to make a question that relates to morality and that relates to the place we are in our lives with god at that time and so because i'm like there and they are like here you know we and like and you know we can't move forward from that because it is what it is and so we have to end the relationship okay so um are you single if you are why i am single <laughs> i am single i've been single for the past two years going on my third in january it's because I made a conscious decision to just separate myself from relationships. You know, there are times when you're just like, who am I? You know, sometimes I've, I've noticed that you lose yourself in relationships. Um, parts You lose parts of you, rather, in relationships. And so you get to a point where you're just like, whom am I? You know, uh, whom am I? You know, it's an existential crisis. Like, whom am I? Why am I here? You know, and so I had to deal with those questions and really just come back to myself because sometimes you find yourselves in relationships. Um, the reason why rather you lose yourself is because sometimes you compromise because you are, um, your judgment is clouded by love and attraction. And so, you know, you don't become real with yourself. And at the end of it all, you're just like, how did I get you? Like, how did I get you? And so I had to deal with that because I knew that that is not the kind of cycle I want in my life. Um, what I was doing was not what I wanted. And so I had to address it at the root. And so I decided I can only do that when I'm single. Um, and people really think that you, you become a better partner by being in relationships. It's not true. You become a better partner by being single because in relationships, you are in love. You know, love will cloud your judgments and you will constantly, you won't learn anything. But when you take time away, it is you and yourself. You get to deal with your insecurities. So face, face to face, Mina now, Mina now, just you and me, you know, and there's nowhere to run to. So yeah, 
anyways what do you think are your top five personality traits hey i think i am i'm really i'm a, I'm a person who's able to relate to a lot of people i think i'm relatable and i can relate with people and different kinds of people like with me a lot of the people like on my phone list or people that i interact with a lot are not people who are exactly like me but i'm still able to interact with them and we're still able to have good vibes good relationships i think my second personality trait would be um my, my second top five personality trait would be my hard work i really work hard i believe that if i want something i'm gonna get it and um yeah my my third personality trait would be my trustworthiness you can really trust in me um like i said i'm a friend who you can confide in and that is only because i forget secrets like <laughs> you know once i got in high school i started forgetting secrets so i really thought that okay this this is it's a good thing right it's not that bad <laughs> so anyways but beyond that i really am a trustworthy person fourth um fourth one is i really believe in people i i do i believe in people because i know that god believed in me when he had no reason to so i really really believe in people and i know that i've been able to impact people so so much you know by not even trying sometimes because i really believe in people and i know that there's more that everyone has to offer um my fifth personality trait has to be um my relentless determination like if i want something i'm gonna get it i believe that nothing is um it is nothing is out of arm's reach you know everything is within arm's reach basically and so whatever i want i can get it if i put my mind to it that's right <laughs> all right so um in school were you a teacher's pet a teacher's pet or the kid who always got in trouble both actually uh i was a teacher's pet because i was smart um especially in afrikaans my afrikaans teachers there's no afrikaans teacher i can think of right now who did not like me no 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 not like love me like my afrikaans teachers have like they always adore me because afrikaans you know was the easiest subject for me i did really well in afrikaans without even trying so um yeah so i, I was a teacher's pet uh, especially my afrikaans teachers you know really really because would even talk in afrikaans sometimes you know yeah you're from oh you know what i'm saying well they really enjoyed that so <laughs> and then i was not because i told you i was super talkative so teachers really hated that part of me because i would be disruptive and yeah you would say play still petunia and then yeah, petunia play still and you're just like yeah, you know so um and it didn't help that i always made friends with people who talk a lot and when we're in the same class i mean we, 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 we just don't know the type and the place for our conversations so we just want to have them <laughs> even if it means your fro is teaching so yeah anyways um do you still drink alcohol if not why not no i do not drink alcohol anymore and i think i explained the whole thing i got into church church made me so i got into serving at church like proper serving at church not just existing you know in the department but actually serving at church and it took time away from other stuff and so because i didn't have time for other stuff i didn't have time for beverages you know the only beverage i was drinking was you know the blood of jesus <laughs> the blood of jesus and water and juice and cold drink yes <laughs> so yeah um what is your favorite thing to do my favorite thing to do is to chill with my friends i really enjoy time with my friends and basically because my family like we're not really tight-knit you know so times with my friends i really enjoy where we just go out plus last year god blessed me with amazing friends and you know we like going out you know traveling to get god uh, and just chill together man you know i really like that kind of vibe um and i also love eating ice cream ice cream i love ice cream guys yo anyways oh yeah you can tell actually because in the whole opening graphic there's ice cream there ice cream and chocolate but ice cream is my number one my number one okay anyways um let's move on name three things that you are good at i'm good at convincing people i have this persuasive i have this this, this anointing of persuasiveness you understand i can i can sell anything you know if i want to if i'm in that vibe but that's why I, even when i apply for jobs i'm like yo let me just get an interview no 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 no. let me just get an interview i'm getting the job you know so i'm really good at selling myself you know i'm really good at persuading and all of that 
I'm also really good at anything creative. I'm a creative at heart. Um, so anytime I need to practice, I need to bring out my creative juices. Juices, I deliver. I deliver. And um, another thing I'm, I'm 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 good at, I think, is talking. You know, so public speaking. Um, talking to people. You know, I really believe that I have that kind of. Yeah, I can do that. I can do it. I'm good at it. You know. So, name of the last book you read? I Kiss Dating Goodbye. It's an amazing ebook, and it was written like it was published rather in the 90s, bruh. But it's an amazing book. It really changed my life. Um, I love that book. Everyone who knows me knows I love that book. And if you would like a copy of it, please you can leave a comment right there, and I'll give you my numbers, and I'll definitely share it with you because that book is amazing. It is life changing. Um, name of um my favorite book and why i just shared that um the last book i read is my favorite book so i decided to read it again i think i've read that book like three times uh the first time i read it was in 2017 and i really like thoroughly enjoyed it and then i'm i'm reading i read it again i think in 2018 here and there and then this year like right now i decided to read it again like thoroughly again from like i read every single chapter so yeah i'm still reading it but yeah uh, generally, uh, what kinds of movies do you watch and which one is your favorite? I'm not too picky with my movies as long as there's no sex scenes, there's no nudity, not too much swearing. I, I really don't like how all movies just have swearing so much. Like, my ears are so sensitive to swear words. Like, when someone swears, it's like, <laughs> it just disorientates me you understand so um yeah but a lot of movies we know today just have swear words that's why god please help me guys we need christian filmmakers that are going to make quality christian work that is not going to be like swearing and all of that so um oh like this other movie i watched guys there was this movie i really thought like it was just like you know a secular movie Kanti, it was actually a christian movie made by a christian you know a christian uh, 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 Christian crew. So I was like, wow, this is great. I forgot the name, but I'll try and share the, I'll actually share the name in the description box. But that movie is what I'm talking about. It was fun. It was lit. It was funny. Quality. I enjoyed it. That's what we need. That's the content we need. So, okay, so yeah, kinds of movie. I'm not really picky. I used to really like, like scary movies like sci-fi. Um, no, thriller. Thriller. I don't like sci-fi. Woo! Science fiction! Yo! But I like thrillers. I like thrillers um, and horrors. I don't mind those. But I don't really watch them anymore. Because I, 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 I love laughing more than being frantic and being like, oh, What's gonna happen next? Oh my gosh, he's dead. Oh, oh, you know, yeah, I'd rather laugh. So I, my favorite, favorite, favorite has to be comedy. Comedies and dramas. And um, I also like, like, these days I'm liking deep movies. Movies that change your perception like of the world like change the way you see things i really like movies like that these days um and which one is your favorite like i said i like dramas obviously comedy but really these movies that just change your whole perspective on life i feel like yeah like the upside you know my favorite 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 movie wonder oh my goodness i love that movie I love that movie so much and the next question is name your favorite movie which is wonder wonder is the spoke of this boy that was born with you know his face dis disorientated a uh, dis no he was born with a disfigured face and so going through life man i mean it was hard for him you know he 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 existed in his own kind of bubble he used to like wearing like his spaceship um the spaceship helmets you know because like obviously he likes um he wants to be an um What's the word? He wants to be an astronaut, you know, and also like it hides his face, you know, but you know, then now he has to go to school and it's so, it's, it's so touching, you know, how the kids think he's a monster and you're just like, who taught these kids that? Because kids are just so accepting of anybody, you know, and as they grow older, you know, they start having different views of stuff and they viewed him as a monster and he was such, a, he was such a cool kid with such a big heart super smart you know and yeah the principal tried to get him like three friends but they went through their problems and the one that kind of brushed him off the most was the one who became his best friend and you know it just it also tells i love that it also gives the perspective of like his parents you know of his mom his dad and his sister on how his you know his journey has also affected them 
you know so i really liked that holistic approach to it all when you get to see how her sister has also struggled through it all you know the kind of things she's problems she's had until eventually she also gets to her breakthrough and then the mom also how it's affected their marriage and just all of that it was super interesting and very touching i'm telling you that movie had me crying i don't like crying when i watch movies you understand but i didn't know that it was gonna be so touching like i was the whole time i was here like oh, you know i was just like you know like it's not everywhere like getting a tissue was just hopeless because yo it was like i was crying a river you know it's it's that movie and also remote i love no click it's called click click also it's funny it's adam sandler you know adam sandler is starring you know but yo that movie is deep because it just shows how we should appreciate everyday moments you know but yeah so he was trying to fast forward through life you know and meantime then now the remote is broken because he got this re time traveling remote and then the remote gets broken and then he wakes up and he's an old man he's about to die he's on his deathbed his wife has divorced him and married another man his daughter is grown his his son is grown and all of them have 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 you know are saying that they didn't get to experience their father in their life and when they were growing up like their relationship was so important but because he was just fast forwarding through life you know and the important stuff so yeah shame it was really sad i just tried to summarize it there um okay so what do you look for in a partner like i said i don't have a type i just want you to be born again living for christ serving in church like you, you have to be a godly man you know you need to be a man of god like um i think i'm just sometimes saying christian is just you're downplaying it and you're opening yourself up to just so much other stuff that you won't expect but i think saying i want a man of god a godly man that right there describes it all someone who's devoted to god someone who fears god someone who's living for god that is the kind of man i want um and obviously looking good smelling good dressing well that's a bonus <laughs> so um what is your worst habit? my worst habit is that i'm so controlling sometimes i can't even help it when i'm not in control and things are falling apart like i just have a, an inward kind of i don't know what to call it like like i just i go i go crazy you know so um my worst habit i'd say is my controlling my controllingness my bossiness and also i'm not the most tidiest person especially when i'm in the midst of so many other stuff i think my space will be the most untidy but not dirty guys there's a difference between dirty and, and untidy there's dirty and there's untidy mine is just untidy but it's not dirty so yeah i had to i had to just let you know who's your favorite artist favorite artist is william mcdowell pastor william mcdowell i love him i love him i love him my favorite song is when you walk into the room by william mcdowell and my favorite album called sounds of revival i love that album and so yeah it's on that album when you walk into the room everything changes and darkness starts to tremble at the light that you bring let me hold it right there because i know right now i'm just your ears are not responding well to my singing so have you ever cheated yes i have one time and i really am not proud of it um yeah my basically i broke up with my ex and i realized that he went into another relationship so i was like okay i need to go out and live my best life also so i got into a rebound relationship i'm talking fast because we don't have much time right now i went into a rebound relationship and so when my ex came back into the picture yeah i i cheated with my ex for a few days and then broke up with my boyfriend um have you ever lied <laughs> like the common pop song says women lie men lie numbers don't lie <laughs> you know yes you know we all lie we all lie you know um but obviously as you as you journey with god more you you learn that look you need to be an honest person your word needs to be your word and i really am still growing in development i think i'm better now um i'm not much of a liar that i used to be then but yeah so we are, we are, I, 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 I have lied many times many times and uh, have you ever shoplifted yes i have when i was a small little girl a beginning and y'all i stole a chocolate at the kiosk and my mom found out and she made a whole scene about it she was telling me yeah arrest her arrest her and it was like 
Whoa, man, that was crazy. I, I think I've never cried so much. That day, like, I cried, I cried, I cried. Black moms can be so brutal sometimes. <laughs> but I guess it's, it's, it's for a good cause because now, like, I would never shop. From that day, I never shoplifted ever again. I never even thought about it. So, yeah. I've even been scared of people framing me. You know people can frame you? Like, I know how people... When you guys are walking through the doors that, that that have those sensors and someone can put something in your bag bruh like i've seen it in movies they put something in your bag and then they're walking alongside you and then beep, 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 and it stops on you can't they also stole something bruh like i'm scared of that but anyways um worst breakup story <laughs> when my boyfriend broke up with me the same day that i found out that my uncle passed away that was devastating oh that hurt me so much oh it was it was so sad but anyway i got back together with him later on and i never told him he doesn't know till this day he does not know that he broke up with me the same day i found out that my uncle passed away so yeah what is your biggest fear i do not have any like physical fears um I, i'm not scared of heights anymore i'm not scared of snakes look look no i think there's a difference between being scared of things and having fear you know fear is a state of mind but being scared is a reaction to things that are scary snakes are scary i'm gonna be scared when i see a snake but i'm not like it's not my fear i just like shit goes to bed <laughs> oh worst drunk story oh my goodness when i could for the first time in my life i couldn't get sober i i always get like when i want to be sober I, I would like drink water and whatnot and just chill and then i'll be sober that day i could not get sober i don't know what i drank you know i was mixing drinks that night you know it was my first experience in a club and that's why i really i didn't like clubs before that and even after that so it was a wild night is all i'm gonna say <laughs> um you what is your favorite food ice cream you scream ice cream ice cream i love ice cream i love ice cream like i feel like in my house i want an ice cream room and next door there's going to be a chocolate room so ice cream all things ice cream man ice cream sandwiches you know ice cream on pancakes ice cream on waffles you know ice cream ice cream ice cream everything that's what i want so um and last question what is the biggest lesson of your life my biggest lesson of my life is be you man do what you want to do because you are the one that you have to answer to at the end of the day people can say what they want to say but if you're happy with whatever decision you have made then you you won't have a problem because regrets is like i feel like the biggest the biggest like it's, it's the biggest trap and we constantly walk into that trap like stop doing what people want you to do and what people expect of you to do do what you want to do so that you don't have to deal with the regret that comes at the end of the day because the regret hits you alone it doesn't hit you with those people that were telling you to do that what not what not what not so i say do you do you the best way and the more you do you the more you'll love you the more you'll appreciate you the more you'll realize that you you are valuable you are worthy you know i think people who constantly live under other people's shadow will never live to their full potential because they are too busy you know being someone else's shadow they're too busy walking in the steps of another person instead of creating their own path that's what i'm saying thank you guys so much for tuning in please like please comment please subscribe please share 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 with the whole world thank you so much for tuning in from me petunia much love god is good all the time don't forget it it's really not defined by the blessings they don't get it I'm